Okay, Sarah told me that I could use her room today while she's out because it's the only room in my house that you guys have never seen. And I love the way that she decorated it. It feels like you're in some luxury uh, motel or, or hotel, not a motel. Motels are, are not luxury usually, but hotels are. Anyway, anyway, um, what I was thinking about today, this morning, as, as I was waking up, I was thinking about media, media body image, and and how they, I was thinking about how they subconsciously get so under your skin that they can even ruin lives because, because they subconsciously try to dictate to people the way you have to look to be valued. It's such a lie. It is such a scheme from I don't know, the evils of this world, right? And, and um, because people's lives literally can be ruined by thinking that you've got to look a certain way. And I know, I remember when I was looking back on my photos, if you see the way that I looked at 12, I, I wanted so badly, that was the day of the hippie, I'm 58, so that was the day of the hippie and to have long, straight hair. That was how you had to look to be cool, to be to look good, right? And and look at me. I did not, I'm short and stout and I was not, I'm not long and lanky with the long, straight hair like the hippies are supposed to look. And, um, and I hated myself. And especially, you know, oh my goodness, going into adolescence and things it's like you just want to dig yourself a hole and bury yourself or crawl into a corner and and just never be seen or wear a bag over your head I literally one time I got a pimple and I thought I'd rather have a bag over my head than go out and have people see this pimple isn't that stupid as though I my whole value of my being was about how I looked right because that's the way they make you think they make you think that you can only be valued if you look a certain way but you know what I feel like I have a secret I have a bypass it's it's like what I finally after all these use my 58 years of wisdom and nip your problem in the bud and and the secret is the kryptonite to their superman is um now oh, here i'm getting to the crucial point and my mind went blank oh dear oh my goodness what was i gonna say oh yeah i just remembered the kryptonite to their superman is seeing the big picture the big picture of your life because you were made for so much more than than um that and the way that you look oh yeah i i know i know i messed up i was talking about myself when i was 12. instead of just accepting my curly hair i would wrap it i heard back in those days you try to wrap your hair and my the photos of the way i looked when i was 12 were so ugly. That's the ugliest part of my life because I was trying to be something that I wasn't. That was my point. I finally got back on point. I was trying to be something that I wasn't instead of embracing who I was. Look, this is what I was born with. And you know what? It's worked good for me. When I was on the mission field, I, I couldn't go to any beauty parlor and I had to, but my hair, because it is like it is. I can just pull out a piece and cut it. I just, that's how I do my hair. I don't go to a beauty parlor. If I see a, <laughs> something that I don't like, I just cut it off and nobody can tell because it's curly. And then it's so easy. All I have to do is wet it and go like that. After it dries, I let it dry and go like that. And it's done. I don't brush it or anything. So when I embraced what I thought was the bad, one of the bad things about me, when I embraced it, I ended up finding something good. And you know what? That's the whole point of what I'm talking about today. Seeing the big picture, embracing who you are, the way you are. And, and um, you know what? Even the things that you think are bad, are bad about you, like the things that I thought were bad, my darkest times, my darkest times, the darkest things I've gone through have turned into my, my most precious treasures. 
as I've overcome them. And that is, that is, I mean, the big picture. Now I want to tell you about a couple of people because for, to, to make my point, to make my point about embracing yourself in your situation, what you were born into for, and, and the, even the circumstances that have come upon you because everything with the, I, I always told my kids as they were growing up, it's all in the attitude. With the right attitude and with God's help, all things can turn for good and that is the truth. And so the thing is, first of all, I wanna tell a little story that I heard about this lady, a true, these are both true life stories. And this lady called um, um, Amy Carmichael. She was from the way, way, way old day. I'm not sure, <coughs> I'm not sure, sure what year, but this is the way old days, like before airplanes, I think. I'm not sure. And um, this lady, she, when she was little, this is a true story, when, <coughs> when she was little, she was so sad that she had um, brown eyes. She wanted with all of her heart, the biggest thing that she wanted was blue eyes. And this is true. She would, she would, nowadays, all you have to do is go out and buy um, contacts to change your eye color. But back in those days, you had to, you were stuck with what you got. But, um, so she, she was, would cry and pray out to God every day. Give, please change my eyes from brown into blue. Please change my eyes from brown into blue. Well, guess what? God knew better. He gave her brown eyes for a reason. It turned out later on, she went to India. I think she was either from America or England. And she went to, she went to India because she had heard about these girls that were, that were like slaves. They were slaves to, um, like a kind of like the whites not white slavery they were they were um it was they were indians and they were girls that had been taken from their homes and used for as prostitutes against their will and um she had heard about them and she wanted so bad the biggest prayer of her heart was to help these girls that was what she was made for and um and so uh she finally got over there and you know what? She realized God gave her wisdom. The only way she could help those girls is if she pretended to be one of them. And you know what she did? She took green, she took tea, tea, um, and she colored her, her arms and legs and her whole body with tea to look like them. If she had had blue eyes, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't have worked. Because she was born with brown eyes, she was able to accomplish her destiny, what she was made to do in life, which was to help these girls. And to, I, I don't even know, I, I don't know the full story, if she kind of snuck them out or how what, what she ended up doing. But anyway, that's, that's a story of embracing what you were born with. And because whatever you were born with, you know, instead of thinking, I wish I were that, I wish I were that, I now am grateful. I see so, I see that everything is, as I look back on my life, I see that everything has had a reason, everything. Every little detail has been, has worked together to make me who I am. You know, and so the thing is, but I, I what I want, a lot of the you who watch me are young. And if you could get a hold of this now, instead of de despising who you are and always wanting to change, if you could get a hold of this right now and start to look at even the things you hate and embrace them. And as, as this is who God made me to be, why did God make me like this? What's his plan, you know? And, and, and I'm telling you, then he'll, you'll feel his wind at your back and you will go forth into wonderful things. But now a different story of when bad things happen to you. When bad things happen. Okay, this is a story about a man and it's a true life story and it's public knowledge so it's okay that I printed it out, I think. I hope. I don't think he'd mind. It's a man named Dave Rover. 
I think it's Rover, R-O-E-V, Rover, Rover. And this man, um, he was, I, I don't know what year he was born or anything, but he was a young man during Vietnam, so you, v, the Vietnam War, right? And he was old enough to go over and fight, and he had just gotten married. Okay, so that's about how, his age. I don't know if he was born in the 40s or whatever. Anyway, anyway, so <clears throat> I'm going to read some of this because this is so, this made me cry. This really made me cry. It was so powerful. Okay, so he had just gotten married. He had just gotten married, and he was, um, and so anyway, his wife came over for a leave uh, when he was off. You know, she I think she flew over for a little vacation before he was sent into the really hot spots. Okay, so I'm just going to read it because it's so powerful. On their last day together, because he was over in Vietnam, and he was a, just a really good-looking guy, you know, beautiful wife. On their last day together, Dave and Brenda talked about waiting until he returned home to start a family, just in case he didn't make it. He imagined himself coming back healthy without a scratch. That day was the closest he would come to living out that fantasy. Dave kissed Brenda goodbye and said, Baby, I'll be back without a scar. While serving on the boat in Vietnam, tragedy struck hard. The guns, okay, I've got to make a disclaimer here. There's parts of this that I didn't print it up well, and I won't be able to read some of it because, oh, it's hard to see. Uh, it's dark, but something else was superimposed over it. So anyway, and I, you know me, I'm technically challenged, so this is as good as it gets. Okay. So, um, while serving on the boat in Vietnam, tragedy struck hard. The guns on his boat engaged in a firefight. They were letting off 500 rounds a minute per gun against the shore. And then it skips out here. Okay, anyway, we will... There was a hand grenade, and it was thrown, okay? Then, then, um, a sniper and all of this. Okay, I'll skip down to here because... What happened was um, the superimposed thing. Okay. Anyway, all of a sudden he realized he's on fire. He's on fire. And so he, he jumped into the water. Okay. When Dave realized what happened, that his body was on fire, he jumped into the water. But phosphorus fire is unaffected by water. So Dave's skin was still burning. When he surfaced from the water and inhaled air, he sucked fire down into his lungs, bronchial tubes and throat, scorching the insides of his mouth and vocal cords. Imagine <sighs> inhaling fire. After, and he was on fire. After surfacing, Dave said his next words were, God, I still believe in you, man. The effects of the explosion, and here he's burnt all over, the effects of the explosion were devastating and the intense heat nearly, uh, I don't know this word, eviscerated him. The gr grenade had blown up, listen to this, the grenade had blown apart his chest and left a gaping cavity. He could literally see his heart beating through a hole. His right hand and left arm were on fire. His head was on fire and had burned his scalp, ears, nose, lips, and eyelids. Dave was left blind in his right eye, deaf in his right ear, and the entire right side of his head was burned down to the skull. The right side of his face was blown back so far his tongue almost fell out of his mouth. The medics loaded Dave on the helicopter and thought he was dead. When he was first put on the stretcher, he burned through it. Listen to this. When he was first put on the stretcher, he burned through it, fell, and hit the ground. He was so hot that he burned the stretcher. Dave was evacuated to a medical post in Japan where doctors didn't expect him to live. After surviving the initial shock, he was transported to Brook Army Medical Center in San Antonio, Texas. Now listen, because this is not just about him, it's about his wife. And it's all in the attitude. Listen to this. 
After surviving the initial shock, he was transported to Brook Army Medical Center in San Antonio, Texas. The wives would see their husbands for the first time in the burn ward, badly burned and bandaged, some, bandaged, some unrecognizable. Many, many of them literally laid their this is horrible. Many of the wives literally laid their wedding bands next to their spouses' beds and walked out. The women were unable to emotion God have mercy, forgive them. The women were unable to emotionally cope with their husbands' disfigurements and chose to abandon them. Suffice to say it, Dave was more than anxious as he awaited his wife's arrival. Brenda walked in and was unable to recognize his disfigured body. She actually went up and read the chart on his bed to confirm it was him. Then she read the tag on his arm to be positive, convinced it was her husband. Listen to this, convinced it was her husband. She bent down, kissed his face, looked him in his eye, not eyes, eye, because he only had one, and said, I want you to know I love you. Welcome home, Dave. I tear up here. Straining to speak, he softly said, I'm sorry, Brenda, that I won't be good looking anymore. Brenda replied, that's okay, Dave. You weren't that good looking in the first place. Man, and then they write here, wow, the power of true love. Okay, so then I'm gonna skip down to some things I've yellowed here. No, can't come in right now. My dogs, okay. Stop it! Sorry, okay. Um, oh my, I'll let them in just to. All right, okay, come. Shh, gotta be quiet, gotta be quiet. Shh. Okay, okay. Um, all right, I'm going to skip down to the parts of yellow. Gizzy, stop it. Be still. Okay, sorry. Um, okay, Dave, I'm going to skip down. Dave began to heal. Oh, as Dave began to heal, he realized God had a message for him to share with the rest of the world. No matter how bad things seem to be, don't ever give up. And then I'm going to skip down to, to, um, Okay, see, God was turning it all around for good. When, when you've got, it's all in the attitude. No, he can make everything beautiful, everything. Okay, this is to show how much his, he was healed in his heart and everything. Well, let me show you a picture of him. This is now, he's such a wonder, well, he's older now. This was some years ago. But look at, look at that. He, they were able to reconstruct him, you know, to make him be able to get around in life. But anyway, it says here, Dave Rover always brings laughter to his own story of pain and suffering and isn't afraid to crack a joke at his own expense. A gifted piano player, he does not hesitate to pull off his prosthetic ear and play the piano with it, um, announcing, I play the piano by ear. <laughs> One, one time his fake ear fell off during a speech and he picked it up and put it back on. Many people in attendance believed he was a miracle worker and were saved as a result. <laughs> they thought, <laughs> but anyway, and then the last thing I, oh no, a couple more things I put. Um, every, he says, everybody has scars, Rover preaches. Mine just happened to be on the outside. Everybody needs healing. Everybody. Everybody. So then, then the last thing. Okay. When many a man would have been consumed by anger and bitterness, he said he found gratitude in being alive. It's all in being thankful. And then the, the last thing he says, I don't intend to go out quietly, Dave says. I want to make a difference in people's lives. And what I wanted to tell you was, it's all in the big picture. You can get through and, and, you know, you can bypass all of the media's, you know, they're kind of like Hitler's over us, whether we realize it or not, because, because we are so affected subconsciously. But, 
you know, I, I thank God he's healed me so much that I'm, I used to be the most insecure person, but he's made me so secure in, in who I am that it doesn't matter. I can appreciate other people being beautiful. And, and I realize that I'm made for, for a reason. Let me tell you, I hope that they don't mind, a little something about my daughter Hannah and Sarah. Okay. Um, Hannah once, this was, this was a couple years ago. She, I hope she's okay with this. Okay. She was feeling a bit insecure because she was looking, she was not seeing her own beauty. And she's beautiful. She's beautiful. But she was seeing, she was comparing herself to Sarah. See, they are equally beautiful, both of them. And so is Lexi and Timmy, but they are equally beautiful. But they're beautiful in different ways. See, Sarah has the Latin kind of um, glamorous look, right? Like the... Sophia, whatever her, whatever her name is on um, Modern Family, or, you know, that kind of Latin, or like the, the Latin one on Desperate Housewives, you know, that kind of glamorous Latin look, okay? And she just was born that way. And then Hannah was born with my kind of beauty. And you know what? There was a time when I thought I was ugly, and now I realize I'm not ugly. I'm just... I have my own inner beauty and I'm beautiful in a, and my face is not ugly, I'm beautiful in a different way. Okay, so Hannah has my kind of beauty and, and um, but you know what I, I told, I realized and I told her, you see Hannah from the time she was two years old wanted to be a nurse right? She was made to be a nurse and she's almost graduated from nursing school but she was made to be a nurse and what does a nurse what is one of the major qualities a nurse has to have comfort right comfort and Hannah's kind of beauty like mine there's something I one good thing I can say about myself I think that because I look the way I look the way God made me people can they they find it easy to open up and and they feel comfortable with me and they can talk to me and that's what I love I was made to help to draw people out of themselves to love on people and and Hannah was has my kind she has my kind of of beauty that she is able to um, to you know what she needs to be a nurse to be make people feel you just by the first look at her, they know that they can feel secure and comforted. And so you see everybody, there was, there's a master plan in it all. And you just have to embrace the reason why you were made. You know, like Ben Carson, Dr. Ben Carson, he is, he comforts people because he was born to a woman who was illiterate. But she God gave her so much wisdom to encourage him to study. And he was very poor and illiterate, and it came from an illiterate mom. But she um, was, that's a different story, I'll tell a different day, I, maybe I already did. Um, but she was, was able to encourage him. He is one of the brightest men in the whole world. He's the top brain surgeon in the whole world, I think. And, um, but you see, he overcame. And you know what? The stories that have helped me the most in my life are the stories of people who have overcome. And the way people overcome is when they don't get, you know, they don't give up, like what Dave said. They don't give up. They, they just accept and find God in the, and find, you know, take His hand in the circumstances they're in and allow Him to turn their darkest, most horrible things into their most beautiful treasures. And so that's all for today. Gizzy, let's say bye-bye.